Good morning. I'm John Calkins, and for the next 90 minutes, I'm your guide for a journey around the world, a world of change. Change comes from nature. It's inevitable. It's as predictable as the seasons, and it's part of the cycle of life. We flow with this change, but change can also be unexpected, and we must confront this change. Change also comes from innovation and technology, which is why we get together every year here in San Diego. This year is a wonderful time of change. We are all becoming geo-collaborators and geo-designers. You have the power to create change by choosing how to react and respond. In the past, many of us were cartographers mapping the world, and then we became GIS analysts performing advanced spatial analysis to better understand our world and what it all means. But today, I'm choosing to also, to also become a geo-designer with the ability to create and design a better world and a better future. So where do we look when we want to change? Well, we look towards each other for inspiration to see how others are changing and how others are designing. So let's get started on a journey and take a look at some of these changes. Our first story is the Port of Rotterdam. The Port of Rotterdam was created in the 14th century. Today, the port is one of the biggest and busiest of the world. Harboring the biggest ships in the world is a never-ending challenge against weather, ocean currents, and time. The port is responsible for the safety and the security of everyone involved. The port handles more than 350 million tons of cargo every year, and a single ship can deliver more than 18,000 containers that need to be moved in just hours. A ship sails into the port every six minutes, 365 days a year. This is a world-class story about confronting change, safety, navigation, design, asset management. It starts with a strong GIS foundation and a geocentric pattern enabling the entire organization. So please welcome, from the Port of Rotterdam, Erwin. Hi, John. Welcome, welcome. Say hello okay. to all these hello. people. Hello. Now, Erwin has a great story to share about the sheer magnitude of enterprise integration into all aspects of port operations to run one of the most sophisticated ports in the world, and how technology is the backbone behind the port. However, Erwin's also Dutch. So I'm going to give you a little translation clue. In Rotterdam, they have a word for this place where those big ships come in and dock. They call it a K-wall. If you're British, you'll call it a key wall. And well, if you're American, we just call it a pier or a wharf. So with that translation help, Erwin, the stage is yours. Thank you, John. Thank you. Now, let's kick in with a question. What would you do when you still want to grow, but you can no longer expand? What would you do if you have to almost double your throughput in the next 15 years to come, but you can no longer expand? That's the fundamental question we had to ask ourselves at the Port of Rotterdam. And we are pretty confident that we found an answer to it. We changed our mission. Instead of being the biggest port in the world, which we were for decades, we want to be the best port in the world. That means the most responsive to, to our customer needs, the safest, the most efficient, and the most sustainable port in the world. To put that in other words, we want to be a world-class port. Now, let me take you to our port. This is us. This is who we are. And about the size, do you have any idea how long it takes for a ship to sail from one end to the other? Four hours. And bear in mind, every six minutes, a ship is either coming in or going out. Now, as you all can see, we are constrained by water and by the cities. We can no longer expand. 
The only thing that is left for us to do is to improve or to optimize what we have, to optimize what is already there. But how to optimize if there are so many users in the port, like port developers, business managers, project managers, asset managers, environmental advisors, the port harbor master operators, financial analysts, who all use maps and who all need maps, but who all use their own systems and who all use their own definitions. We had to create something new. We had to create a platform for these users, enabling them a single point of entry for all their information. We had to create a new world-class port map system. And this is the name, Port Maps. And this is how it looks like. And I'm so very proud to show you this beautiful map of our beautiful port, not only allowing all, its, all our users a single point of entry to all their information, but it will also help us to optimize our four transportation modalities. Now, we've been moving goods around the port for centuries, using water, roads, pipelines, and railways. But recently, we found out that if we want to optimize these four traditional transportation modalities, we need another one. We need a fifth modality in our port, and that is information. Because nothing in the port moves without information. And everything in the port, from the largest berth to the smallest lock and key, is connected by information. Now, we have been very successful, implemented port maps in the last six uh, months of 2013. And since we got live, over 300,000 maps have been generated by it. Imagine that. That's almost 1,000 maps a day. And I really want to share with you our three key secrets to success. The first one, we were smart. We had to let go of everything. We went back to the start and asked ourselves a basic question. What are we? What is a port? And you know what? And you may not gonna believe it, but we, the Port of Rotterdam, found out that we are a birthing place for ships. Now, when, <laughs> yeah, actually we did. Now, as, <laughs> as soon that we, well, let's, so to speak, rediscovered ourselves, we divided the port into three major areas, water, land, and a fixed border in between into blue, green, and into red, so to speak. And after we did that, it was very simple for us to transform 1,500 layers of information into 10 single core objects, which make the heart of our port object data model. As you can see here, a lease object or a berth or whatever. The second one, we didn't cut corners on quality. We used three quality components to enable our platform. We used SAP for our administrative and financial information. We used SharePoint to store all our documents and technical drawings. And in the center, connecting everything with geographical information, there is ArcGIS. Now, these components act like the three musketeers, all for one and one for all. The third one, the third lesson I want to share with you, simplicity. Three clicks to content. We wanted a system so simple that even a child could use it. 
we wanted the system as easy to operate as an iPhone. And it's very simple. In three clicks, I will be able to retrieve any information I'm looking for. If it's the depth or the information of a birth location or even from a cable or wharf. Now, let me show you some other exciting examples that my colleagues at the port use. Here you see a lease expiration map. With a single click, click on the map, a business manager is able to see where and when leases are about to expire. And when it runs on an iPad, so he can do that any, at any place in the world, even at the office of a potential new customer. Here you see a front view of a K-wall, or a key-wall, or a wharf, like you guys name it. These waterfront structures are probably the most valuable assets of any port in the world. During their lifetime, these waterfront structures represent billions and billions of dollars representing the value of the goods that make their journey from water to land, or vice versa, from land to water. Now, we embedded in port maps every single front field of any key wall, of every key wall. As you can see here, it's connected to the map. This allows an asset manager to retrieve any information he wants from ele any element he is looking for. It could be a risk profile of that particular section or even the deterioration profiles of the materials that are used, like concrete or steel or anodes. He can even look underwater, so to speak. So if I remove the water and I put on the anodes, he will be able, in a single spot, to see that one element is failing over here. Every 10 seconds, we track the ship positions of every ship. With over a million ship movements a year, this creates big data. And we use these big data sets to answer questions like, what will happen if ships are getting bigger and bigger? Or what will happen with traffic jams on the water in a specific area if it gets busier and busier? And these are some other examples my colleagues of the environmental management department use for their daily work with our external stakeholders, like our big brother, the city of Rotterdam. The principle is the same. Click on the, on the map, and you will, in, you will retrieve the information you, were, you are looking for. Now, having said that, we are pretty confident that port maps will enable us to fulfill our new mission, to become a world-class port. We are convinced that port maps will help us designing our future. And let me at the end, show you my favorite moment, a picture of my favorite moment of last year. Remember, I advise you to use platforms or systems that are so simple that even a child can use it. So did we. On a Saturday morning last year, we asked our own children, the next generation of port employees, the next generation of port maps users to test our software. We asked them and we challenged them, is port maps that easy to use as your iPhone? Can you find information within three clicks? And so they did. And after a few days, port maps set a new course for the port of Rotterdam. Thank you for listening to our story.
Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Erwin. I think this was a powerful presentation on how the port is designing their future with the ArcGIS platform, improving quality and improving productivity. But the most important thing I learned was this, three clicks. And I bet many of you are asking yourselves the same question. Can you access information in just three clicks in your organization? Or as Erwin and his three musketeers might have said, all for one, and three clicks for all. That's I can't do the, uh, the other thing, <laughs> okay. but that's okay. So thanks again, Erwin. This okay. was a thanks great so. presentation. Thanks, Bye-bye.